Hello and welcome back. I am currently here in the garage where I'm getting ready to start working on my 2J. I have got it sitting over here on a stand. You can see that I've kind of got the AC compressor up there. Still got my power steering pump down there. Got to do a couple of things with that before I can put it on. But good news is my alternator arrives today, so I'll be able to put everything on as far as the accessories go. Then additionally, I'm going to be swapping the wheels on this. You can see it's got the works on there right now, but I'm going to take them off, get them uh, ceramic coated, and then put the stock wheels back on until they get back from the guy who's ceramic coating them for me but that's how i plan to start my day so i'm gonna go get the old wheels loaded up in the back of the truck um, take those down to discount tire and bring the car later swap everything out and he'll take them home get them ceramic coated and in the meantime i'm going to be trying to do whatever i can on this thing to get this thing as close to being done as possible today so once all the drive belt stuff is on i won't have to worry about any of that um, i do have to get bolts for the power steering pump and the alternate I don't know how long those need to be yet. Um, I'll probably wait until it actually gets here today. That way I can see exactly what length I need, run to a hardware store, get the bolts for that and the bolts for this. Down here on the floor, I've got my Chase Bay's water neck. So we're going to put that on today for sure. And then maybe once it's up in here, I can get a little idea of how I'm going to hook up these two water hoses to it. That's definitely on the agenda. And then if I can, I'd like to figure out exactly where everything goes for the water vacuum oil all that i don't know if i'll get through any of that today but high hopes that i'll get through everything else i need to get through anyways i'm gonna go get the wheels changed out and then i will be back z is currently very dirty so just ignore all the dirt and the leaves and shit on top of it it's fine and the wheels are all loaded up all right i have no idea if this thing's gonna start up first try but we will see did it. This thing's been making me look like a fool the last few days. I'd get in and I'd crank it over four or five times and it wouldn't start and then I'd have someone else get in and it'd fire right up. F***ing Z's, dude. Don't get it. Alright, well, I figured I'd take a little clip of me driving it. Because I never do. This thing's like a time bomb, so if it blows up, I might get it on camera. Though I doubt it's going to happen today. Fingers crossed. Now that I've said that, I've probably jinxed it. Remember a long time ago when I first started doing things to this car? I made a review about the HKS exhaust on Reddit. And um, honestly, still today, very quiet unless you're revving high. No drone whatsoever. It's one of the best exhaust systems I think I've ever considered putting on a car. Also, if you can hear a really loud squeaky noise, I'm pretty sure that's my wheel rubbing on my coilover for some reason. I still haven't figured out why that's happening, but I'll figure it out eventually. It's so obnoxious. If you can't hear it on the camera, I'm gonna feel a little upset. Cause I hear it all the time when I drive this thing. That's only when I like accelerate. As I accelerate, it causes the wheel to turn a certain way, like it's putting force on it, and then the barrel hits the uh, side of the coilover because the bearing is just, you know, like flopping around in there. If that's the case, I might want to get it checked out sooner than later, though, before my wheel falls off. It's been a fair few hours since you last saw me. The wheels are swapped out on the car. I've gotten a lot of stuff that came in today. The alternator got here, test fitted that. I don't know if you saw this earlier in the morning, but the little pulley for the water pump is on here now. Got the power steering pump sitting up there, also test fitting that. I went ahead and got a Continental belt and put on the drive assemblies, all that good stuff. Down here on the floor next to me, I got my Chase Bay's water neck. There's that Continental belt, by the way. And then there's some tubing there. And then this hose right here, which I put 
open the freezer to kind of mid the diameter of this smaller. That way I could actually fit a fitting over it. It's very cold right now. I'm gonna go ahead and try and put a fitting on it real quick. All right, I don't know if I ever filmed it, but this was my solution to putting the fitting on the pipe. Just had this little fitting here that I screwed onto the pipe, obviously. And then I have a fitting that's a 90 degree elbow, which goes down here to the oil cooler and threads in directly to that. The oil cooler has four different ports on it, two for in and two for out. So I just utilize one of the out ports so it would send oil out that way. And uh, I'm gonna have another one here so I could actually have a hose that routes the front of the car to the actual oil cooler itself. All right, so I'm getting ready to do a test fit on this hose. I bent this pipe a little bit. That's my oil feed pipe right there. And stuck to it right now is a pipe cutter. So I'm going to be trimming the little banjo off the end there. That way I can just put a clamp and a rubber hose and then wrap it around the back to the other side where the oil feed's gonna be coming from. So yeah, I'm gonna cut that off and then uh, do the same to the other one. And then I'll show you exactly what I've got going on. Oh, and by the way, if you've ever wondered how this works, you basically have a little blade inside of here you just tighten it down by twisting this rotate it around the pipe increasingly tighten it as you're going and then eventually you'll be all the way through the middle I'm gonna now try and torque all these down. I looked up the service manual again just to see the torque specs for everything. I'm 100% sure for pretty much all of these with the exception of the alternator over here, I couldn't find torque specs for that. But this bolt and this bolt are both 38 pounds and they bolt into the oil pump. The alternator also bolts to the oil pump and the block. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 38 pounds for both of those. And hopefully that'll be just enough for everything. Most of these bolts I went to Menards for. Depending on where you're located, I don't know if you're gonna have a Menards, but it's a thing in Kansas, I know that. Menards is the only place that I could actually find bolts in the length and quality that I needed. These three bolts here, here, and here are all going to be 43 foot-pounds. So I'll hit those real quick. Now there's a bolt right back in here. You can just barely see it through the hole of the pulley on the power steering pump. That's part of the bracket that holds it on. That one is 29 foot pounds back there. Okay, and then lastly, on the AC compressor, there's two studs here and here. I actually only have one because I was only given one with the motor, and I've searched high and low to find a replacement stud for the top part up here. Can't find it anywhere. Just got this one, so I'm gonna torque that one. Where this little piece of tape is right here, 19. So that stud is 19 foot-pounds, and then the little nut on it is 38. Right there, that hole behind this AC line is where the other stud goes. I obviously, like I just said, I don't have one. I'm gonna hope that that stud plus the two bolts on the front at 38 foot pounds would be enough to hold this thing in place safely. All right, studs at 19. 38 foot pounds on the nut. By the way, if you have the studs, uh, you're gonna need an E10 Torx bit put on there and torque those down. I need to find two more nuts for that because I've only found two so far. I will be back when I do. I now have four brand new matching ones. Much better than having two and two or two ug or four ugly ones. Man, I am bad at math. I think I'm just gonna come back to those once I get the belt on so it won't rotate. And then I'll probably be able to tighten them down a little easier. All right, so it is currently the next day. My camera stopped recording last night in the middle of me finishing up on the belt. I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly what I did to finish it up. It didn't take much, but I figured I'd just refilm it real quick, take the belt off, show you how I put it on, and then be done with it. Okay, so literally all I did was put tension on this, loosens the belt, can take it off right there, and then put it on, it's the same process. 
First thing I did was put it around the tensioner and then slowly loop it around everything else. Put tension here, wrap it around the main pulley. It did take me a couple of tries, by the way. Maybe if I use my leg. And just like that, the belt is in place the way it should be. And all I, all I gotta do is tighten down these four bolts on the water pump pulley, and then it is good. For whatever reason, two of these are 12s and two of them are 13s. Also can't remember if I showed this or not. This was my solution for the pipe. This is a piece of a larger pipe. I just drilled out the inside of it and hammered it onto the end so it'd have a flange. That way I'd have enough of a circumference that it would slide inside of that hose and then I could clamp it all the way on. And then I'm gonna run that line around here to the back. Here is this tube with the flange on the end of it. The clamp is a little loose so I can slide it on and off right now. But that's how that's gonna be. And when I put it in there, I'm gonna have to wrangle it around around some stuff right now just to show the fitment but it's gonna slide up right there I don't know how much of you can see yeah you can see a little bit of it there's the hose back there where my fingers at so that's gonna run behind the exhaust down pipe basically and it's gonna come back here behind the second turbo where the other pipe which I've got sitting right here is also gonna come to the same area I'm gonna put a little Y pipe here and then this big hose that I had back there I'm gonna make a little adapter fitting where I can put a Y pipe onto this to match up to both of those feed and drain pipes and the reason I haven't finalized that yet is because this thing needs to be test fitted so I'm likely gonna have a hose running there from the oil cooler around the back like so and if I plan to run it here then I'm going to need to see how close to the firewall the engines actually gonna sit in order to know whether or not this is a good spot to place this hose at all for all I know I might have to come over the top or route it around something else somewhere but this spot is pretty ideal and honestly that's the spot I want to use so in order to use that spot I need to know exactly where it's gonna sit now with that being said that means I need to order a swap kit so probably this week today is the Monday after Father's Day so it is currently June 19th I believe I'm terrible with dates, don't hold me to that, but I'll probably order the swap kit sometime this week. Then I'll try to do a test fit sometime within the following week, if not that same week. But I know that's really exciting news for you guys because you've been waiting a while to know exactly how I'm gonna get that thing in the car and it's pretty much time. I've got the engine built, I'd say 99% of the way there, minus the oil feed, the water lines, which also, just like the oil lines, I'm gonna need to see how it's gonna fit in the car before I can ultimately decide the final design for where all the tubes are gonna go, where all the hoses and all that should be routed. It's only gonna be solved once I get the, the engine test fitted in the car. So that's the next step. And then of course, I can also start taking apart my harness and hooking up everything that I know I'm already gonna need. Uh, just plugging in the sensors, running the wires around the engine. And then once it's in the car, obviously I get everything else sorted. Then I can start figuring out how I'm gonna wire everything back into the cabin to where the ECU is gonna sit, all that good stuff. How I'm gonna protect the wiring, etc. I also need to figure out what I need to do with my AC lines. I know the 350Z AC compressor is situated in about the same spot on the VQ, but I need to know where to cut and or modify the lines for both of the in and out on the AC compressor and how to get that to match the system that's already on the 350Z. I need to know where all the power steering fluid lines are going to be routing as well. Same with some of the vacuum lines like the brake booster and PCV, all that good stuff. And with those factors determined, I can figure out whether or not I need to just plug some of these things that are on the back, like these two pieces here, or if I need to route hoses from the back side of the engine over to the plenum and draw a vacuum over onto this side of the engine. Also need to know how much clearance there's gonna be for the throttle body. Um, I have to make an adapter plate, so ideally, the bigger the adapter plate, the better. That means I have more space to provide for hardware to fit the adapter to this and then the throttle body to that, but it can't be too big because if it's too big, then it'll interfere with the fender of the car. Also need to find a place to situate my oil dipstick there. And by the way, I forgot to mention this. I said earlier that I'd find a way to route water from the water neck to the hoses over here on the turbos and that little hole I just showed you 
will be able to route. From here, I can make a little elbow that's a 90 degree, and then I can have a little wide piece that splits off into both of these hoses. So that checks out there. Obviously, I'm just gonna run a pipe from here to the whatever radiator that I have. Same as down there. I don't know exactly how well this is gonna work, how much of a length of tube I need that, or what kind of tube I need for this piece here. I'll know where I'll be able to run coolant hoses off of the turbos back down into the system that way, or maybe even backwards into the heater, or maybe even this hose right here that runs straight down into the water bypass pipe. Still have yet to figure that out, but it'll be a lot easier once I can see where everything's sitting at inside of the car. All right, so these are the spark plugs I'm going to be using. They are NGK BKR7EIX. They uh, recommended this one in the Super Forums for engines between 350 and 400 horsepower. So this one is one step colder than the OEM plug. So I'm just going to thread them all down in there. Give me one sec to get the rest in there. All right, so I'm going to be using a 5 8 socket to install the spark plugs. And for whatever reason, if I need to take them back out, I've got a 5 8 8 spark plug socket with a little rubber thing in there to keep it from sliding out of the socket as I'm pulling it up. All right, all the spark plugs are in. Just gotta tighten them down. The torque spec on these guys is 13 foot pounds. Right now I'm going to be putting the Platinum Racing Products Billet Aluminum Coil Bracket up here. So first I'm just going to set it down inside. And there's two uh, countersunk screws that will hold it down on these two bolt holes here and here. Now for the R35 GTR coil packs, there's a bunch of different components to it, but you only need the main part of the coil pack and the resistor at the top. So I'm going to take this apart. Should just kind of slide off slowly. Awesome, there it went. Anyways, this little resistor is all you need along with this when doing the Platinum Racing Products kit. You would put this resistor inside of there and then you have the new coil pack or coil plug thing. I don't know how to describe it, I'll show you. This guy here, they include this with the kit. That pops on there, but you do need this resistor. So put that inside there, pop that on, and then these are good to go on. So I'm gonna do that to all of them and then screw them on. All right, I have all the stocks switched out. That's what these are is the stocks. And and, uh, the resistors are put in so find where the spark plugs at pop these down into place now I'm just gonna put the hardware in All the coil packs are on. All right, I am happy to announce that as of this moment, I have just placed an order for a Collins adapter kit for this thing. That means next time we have a video coming out, it'll be test fitting this thing in the car most likely, if not a couple more odds and ends that need to be tidied up and then the test fit. But that means pretty soon here, I'm gonna need to pull the VQ out and then prepare to put this thing in. And that being said, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you very much for taking the time to watch my video. Just a friendly reminder that if you enjoy watching my content be sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you want to watch more if you want to be notified when my new videos come out be sure to hit the notification bell to alert you when it is posted and lastly make the rest of your day a great day or night whatever you're doing right now peace out i will see you guys in the next video